In The Andy Griffith Show, Andy played the town's universally respected and adored sheriff, Andy Taylor. As the series lead, he worked alongside an ensemble cast of characters that the audience fell in love with. The show's positive message and lighthearted take on the American dream was seen by many as a much-needed reprieve from the massive societal changes taking place in the world at that time. The Andy Griffith Show revisited a more conventional era in American history when the world seemed more simple and less chaotic. Andy was in many ways much like the character he played on TV. While he was a lifelong Democrat, he held to more traditionalistic views and never was one to toot his own horn. Humility was one of his biggest virtues. As such, fame was something that didn't come naturally to him. Keep watching to hear what Andy's daughter had to say about Griffith's struggle to contend with all the attention that fame brought him. It's remarkable that Andy was able to remain as calm, collected, and put together as he was throughout his Hollywood career. Andy learned to be an entertainer to thwart off bullies. Even though he became a world-famous TV star, Andy Griffith still enjoyed spending his summers in North Carolina walking around shoeless. According to his daughter, Dixie Griffith, Andy would frequently go into stores barefoot. Sometimes he'd even go in without a shirt. Apparently, the old no-shirt, no-shoes, no-service thing didn't apply to a star of his caliber. This was just one of many ways Griffith shamelessly bucked the expectation that one might have of a typical Hollywood-type star. He grew up in the sleepy little blue-collar town of Mount Airy, North Carolina. In his younger years, he would never have dreamed that one day he'd own a beautiful home on a 70-acre estate on Roanoke Island in the Outer Banks. Still, once he'd achieved fame and amassed a sizable fortune, he returned to his native state every summer to reconnect with his roots. Dixie says that North Carolina was where her father felt the freest. Frequently, Andy would take his family on boat trips, go water skiing, and play volleyball. He loved the simpler things in life and wasn't one to flaunt his status or indulge in luxuries. According to Dixie, Andy was just a guy who loved to entertain and bring a smile to the faces of people around him. Wherever he went, he was the life of the party. Not because he was a fancy Hollywood hotshot, but because he was a down-to-earth, regular Joe that anyone could relate to. Entertaining was initially just one of his survival skills. As a child, he learned he had a knack for it, and it became his thing. His father worked as a foreman at a local furniture factory so his parents could afford to dress him well. That ended up working against him, however, because the majority of the other kids from Mount Airy were more poor and couldn't afford to dress as dapper as he did. Because of this, Andy was bullied a lot as a child. According to Daniel DeVice, author of the book Andy and Don, The Making of a Friendship and a Classic American TV Show, Griffith hit a significant turning point when he discovered he was able to deflect his bullies' his ire by making them laugh. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Andy was a talented musician and comic. In high school, Andy took drama classes in addition to signing up for music lessons. Griffith's love for both of these things would be a significant part of his story throughout his life and professional career. Dixie recalls her father was always passionate about music. He had several musical instruments, including guitars, banjos, and a piano. While most know him for his work on the screen and stage, Andy was a very talented multi-instrumentalist who put out several critically acclaimed albums over the course of his life, including the Grammy-winning 1996 folk album I Love to Tell the Story, 25 Timeless Hymns. Faith was also an integral theme in Andy's life story. While he was in the process of earning a degree in music at the University of North Carolina, Griffith entertained the idea, albeit briefly, of becoming a preacher. Whenever life would throw Andy challenges, he'd fall back on his faith and unwavering belief in God to help him navigate these obstacles. This was no more evident than the time he was quoted as saying it was his firm belief that in every situation, no matter how difficult, God extends grace greater than the hardship. While in college, he started acting with the Carolina Playmakers, while simultaneously writing his own material. This led to a door being opened to him in the realm of show business. In 1953, his comic monologue entitled What It Was Was Football became a national hit. He followed that up with an appearance in the teleplay No Time for Sergeants in 1955. From there, Andy went on to appear in dozens of films, radio shows, and TV programs, appearing in a variety of roles that showed off his versatility. In 1960, The Andy Griffith Show premiered, and basically overnight, he became a household name. 
With fame, Andy's personal problems began to mount. In 1949, Andy married fellow actress Barbara Edwards, and not long after that, the couple adopted two children, a son named Andy Samuel Griffith Jr. and his daughter Dixie. The death of Andy Griffith's son deeply affected him. Dixie recalled her father always found time to play with her and Sam. She viewed him as absolutely phenomenal as a father. Sadly, however, Griffith and Edwards' marriage was doomed for failure. Their relationship eventually soured, and while they remained married for quite some time, they fought constantly. Both parties drank probably more than they should have, and this only exacerbated their problems. Inevitably, this led to their marriage ending in 1972, when Sam and Dixie were still teens. Sam dealt with the divorce rather poorly. For many years, he drank heavily, battled with substance abuse, and frequently found himself in trouble with the law. This culminated in him passing away from alcoholism in 1996 at age 38. While Dixie knows her brother had many troubles, she doesn't blame her father in the least bit for them. Regardless, Sam's death deeply affected Andy. He wondered if there was anything he could have done differently that might have saved him from his fate. And since there was so much publicity surrounding Sam's death, Dixie says her father began to hate any and all speculation about his personal life. He ended up not attending his son's funeral. According to Dixie, he thought there would be too many people in attendance, and more specifically, too many pesky journalists and cameras. In the years that followed, Griffith didn't discuss his son's passing publicly. Dixie claimed it remained a source of great sorrow in his heart. That being said, Griffith's strong faith, his third wife Cindy Knight, and the remainder of his family's support helped him weather this difficult chapter. He didn't enjoy watching the Andy Griffith show's first season. TV shows often take some time to work out all the kinks. It's not uncommon to hear people say things like, the first season isn't that great, but it gets good from there. The Andy Griffith show was no exception, and one of the show's biggest critics throughout its first season was none other than Andy himself. Andy reportedly once told Aaron Rubin, one of the sitcom's producers, that he couldn't stand watching himself in early episodes. Apparently, he felt his performance was too forced. Throughout the series' first season, both Andy and Don Knotts played up their southern accents quite a bit. Since he had found early success assuming a southern bumpkin role with his what-it-was-was-football comedy routine, it makes sense he would lean into this aesthetic. At first, this felt only natural. But in time, he shifted away from it, thinking it sounded too fake. As the show progressed, Griffith arrived at a place where he was much more comfortable with how his character expressed himself. Likewise, the relationship dynamic with his co-star Don Knotts also evolved. He quickly realized there was a perceivable magic that occurred whenever he let Barney be the over-the-top one while he played the straight man. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Andy Griffith? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.